thank you, Renata. Thank you for joining me today outside with the herd. And uh, this, this is really exciting. Look at that. So we've got a heart flying up the page here at this. So yeah, thank I got... you very much for, for inviting me. I'm, I'm very excited to, to show my herd and, and my animals and to be able to talk about them. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Yes, Carolyn is with us and uh, she's excited to be here and be the first with us. So, right. Hi, Carolyn. Yes, thank you, Carolyn. And, and Jenny's with us as well. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> so, right, you're going to introduce us to the herd and to the different roles that they have and how they interact. Does each animal have a different role? Do they keep to their roles or do they swap roles? So, yeah, they, um, they have their roles and the, the roles um, are very closely connected to their characters. Right. And um, what, what's fascinating within a herd is that everyone can fill out the character or live the character they actually have. Right. So um, it's, um, and, and when they're, so, where do I start? I, I start um, when a herd uh, is living in freedom. So not a domestic herd, but a, a herd, a freely living herd. Um, they consist out of uh, mainly out, out of mares and uh, foals and adolescent horses. And yeah. then there is one stallion with this herd. But this stallion is not uh, a close member. He is not allowed within the groups of the foals most of the time. He is kind of a bit outside and he pays attention and he looks out if there is anything dangerous in the surrounding and then he tells the, the mares and then they react. Um, and so there Actually, the leading person in a herd, in a free living herd, is a mare. And um, it's not about the age or the size of the animal, but uh, if a, a horse is leading the herd, it's not that this animal has chosen it, but it was chosen by the others to be the leader. Because, uh, because of her behavior, she has convinced the others that she is the best one uh, to help the herd to survive. Right. And so now um, here um, we have, a, a, it's not a, um, a free living herd, it's a, a domestic herd and we do not have uh, stallions here uh, unless we have these two foals now, but normally we have geldings and, and mares and then uh, the, the leader of the herd can either be uh, a mare or a gelding. Right. And, but the principle how this um, character is chosen is the same. It's not that someone is saying, I am the leader, I'm the best, I can do that. No, it doesn't work that way. It's, it's, um, they are really chosen by the group of the animals. And then suddenly this one is the leader. Um, uh, so we have been living with our animals here for 15 years now. And yeah. within these 15 years, we had uh, three changes in, uh, in the leading position. Right. And it always went very peacefully. So there were no fights. Um, it mm, all the time. It happened during summertime, 
that you can gradually realize that the former leader is not in charge anymore and he gives up uh, looking around and, and checking who every horse is, where every horse is, and is just more relaxed and by itself. And then you, you, at the same time, you can realize that there is another horse who is now checking where everyone is and if everyone is fine. So it was really a, a gradual shift from, from one animal to the other. Uh, I know that it can also be different. So uh, in some herds, they are also uh, shifts which are not that peaceful and that there sometimes are fights. Um, and I have read a lot about it. And in the books, it also says that the way someone was handed over the position, it's also the way how it will be passed on in this herd. So right. um, I can only tell about my, my experiences. Yeah, yeah. And, and I suppose any new horses that join with yours, they will experience that those changes so it will be a natural way for them if they become a leader to to have that exchange and then when they hand it over continue exchanging in that way i think um that it is that way um i have uh so far experienced horses um, becoming the leader who have been within the herd for a long time. It, it never happened that a new horse who came in was then the leader. So I, I haven't experienced that. And um, what I would also like to talk about is um, how the system of the herd is functioning. So yeah. for me, the herd is an own being, an own entity, and it wants to be safe and secure. And uh, the mm, because it's the the herd is made out of uh, the single animals, and but the single animals animal can't survive. They would have been extinct, so they need the herd. So what's most important is that they live in a secure and safe herd. And um, the herd always takes care that this security is, um, is given. I, I would like to give um, an example. Yes, yeah. Because I think that being um, that the herd and, uh, and horses, they are often seen with our mind, uh, with our human mind, and um, that everything is so calm and so very peaceful and nice and loving, and we, we emphasize on that, and that's what we, we, we like to see in the animals. Um, uh, but they are animals and they are not, uh, they do not have this human mind. So I would like to give an example that um, how the herd, the safety of the herd is the most important thing. Yes. So um, a couple of years ago, I had a, a class where um, we were out there in the field where I am now. And I think it was, a, there were about six, six people uh, and six women, and they were very gently with the horse, and it was as peaceful as you can see it here now. Yeah. yeah so they are all standing not very far from each other, and everything is very, very calm and peaceful. And suddenly, um, I could see it out of my eye. Uh, in the back, there was an animal running over the grass, and it was it was obviously it was wounded, it was limping, and um, it was a badger. And suddenly, really within milliseconds, the leading horse and two others 
and even three others were running towards this badger and kicked him with his with the feet and uh, bite him and he was he was crying and, and screaming and uh, it was oh so the the herd felt in danger and took immediate action and um so he, he this this badger wasn't killed i think um he he made it uh, into into the wood and as soon as he was gone the horses went back to the state they have now yeah. peacefully and absolutely calm eating grassing again yeah and um the people of the class of course they were totally upset they were in tears and they couldn't imagine how is that possible and these nice animals and then how can they react so and i said it's it's their nature they they felt in danger and they have to protect themselves and as soon as they had done so they they saved energy yeah they go back and all the emotions which came up for chasing this animal out this this badger out were gone and they they can be peaceful and calm again and yeah. uh, so this was an, a huge lesson for me to learn uh, and of course for for those people in the <laughs> class it uh, it took um, well this class definitely then went differently as planned um, <laughs> but it was such a huge lesson yeah so how do we with our mind uh, create uh, drama and uh, stick to an event this is past already uh, so this was so as soon as they 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 left suddenly and they got back and went back to normal and yeah. and these people uh, were upset for hours yeah so yeah um the horses let it go yes and the yeah. people held on to it right and they created drama how how sad and how poor and this poor badger what will happen to him and um and they just went back to normal yeah and that was such a great lesson to learn how much do we cling and hold on to stuff that's gone already or that hang on to the past and yeah. it only takes our energy and uh, fills our head with something that's um, not relevant anymore it, it just and tell me renata how long in minutes do you think that the horses running at the badger and the badger making it away from the field and the horses going back to being calm how many minutes did, did oh, that this, take this this was not even minutes i think when it was two minutes this was long it, it really w went in, in it was instantly it, it was so quick that they saw it they took action and they came back again so you think that think how interesting that is that something that lasted possibly less than two minutes lasted yeah. for hours with people absolutely that, that's what was the outcome that's what i wanted to 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 tell that we so much cling and can't let go of things that um, we can't change it anymore and it's over. No, so, and it wasn't even something that was happening to the people. No, that's just something they witnessed and they, yeah, they got, uh, they were part of it. But, but the thing is that they had uh, an other, they had an illusion about what a horse is. A horse is not a human. A horse is uh, an animal and it behaves differently. And the, the main focus was on surviving, yeah. on keeping the herd safe. And that's what I so love when I work with those animals because you really can't cheat them. They, they give you um, 
always a totally clear answer. And as soon as you got it, they go or, or they, they do something else. It's they, they, they do not hang on to something. It's just, they show, okay, you got it. It's fine. And I, I can, you with Sparky now, aren't you? Ah, uh, yes. Sparky, I could see. So tell us what, what sort of personality has Sparky got? So um, Sparky, Sparky is uh, 22 years old. We got him as a foal. He is a Pinto. That's a, a Western kind of breed. Yeah. And we, he is actually the horse of my eldest daughter. Um, and he, he was the boss or the, the leading horse for five years now. Right. And he is, um, he's actually a very calm horse, very reliable. And he, he took over from Tessa, uh, my former uh, horse who died, which died uh, last year. Yeah. And already four or five years before he had taken over. Right. And this summer, um, I realized that he doesn't pay that much, much attention to the other horses anymore. So uh, what a leading horse does is that it always uh, looks where all the others are. And uh, it's also when he's going, let's say, to the another grass, or if he's going to drink, the others often follow. So mm. he's the one who initiates something and he is also the one who, who starts eating or gets the best hay. <laughs> and uh, during summer, I realized that Sparky is not so much uh, taking care of the others anymore. And he, and that's Nayori, he started to do that more and more. Right. Nayori is um, 19. He is a Trakena, that's a, a German breed. Right. He was used for uh, in the war. Was was bred for uh, as a war horse. Um, and he he is um, yeah he he has more. Um, he has a different energy as Sparky has, and he is now, um, he also has another role now towards the, uh, the youngsters, the foals, um, because he's part of protecting them now. Right. And whereas Sparky, um, he more tries to chase them. So they have kind of split the role amongst them, what, um, who is doing what and who, uh, they are educating the foals now. So that's um, another thing I can, I can mention that um, the, the foals and they are here. Um, they are uh, eight and a half and seven months old. Yeah. And the brown one, that's Nazi. He is an, an Arabian full breed. And oh, he's beautiful. Yeah, he is. So, and today I, I watch out if any other horses around. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> horses in action, eh? Yeah, we had a little accident yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the other foal um, that's... Um, Red Snow. He is an um, American Indian horse. And yeah, that's that's him. He's and, uh, yeah. They they both grew up in a herd and yeah. they are, are used to a uh, herd life and, and they know how to behave. Yeah. Um but still 
um, so when a new horse comes to a herd, it's it, 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 when it, they first came, that's um, someone um, who is not welcomed because it might be the new horse might be dangerous for the for their existing herd. Right. So uh, when you enter, when you introduce a new horse into a herd, um, you first allow you separate them but you allow a lot of contact so that they get used to the smell and to the behavior and so that they get familiar to another and and, and learn that okay that's not a danger that's um and how i did it now with the falls was that i always allowed another okay you're biting uh, that i always allowed one or two horses to get to know them closer. And then after two weeks, and this was on Sunday, I allowed, uh, allowed them into the herd. And what they are now doing is that the foals want to get closer, but the elder horse says, uh, no, you have to stay there. And they have to accept. And within weeks, they will be allowed closer and closer till they are fully integrated. It, it depends on the character of the new horses, how long it takes. Uh, sometimes it takes uh, a couple of weeks, sometimes even months. But right. I think with those falls, it, it won't take long. I think within two or three weeks, four weeks perhaps, they they will be fully integrated yeah it i mean they've 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 certainly gone into the the herd quite quickly with with remarkable ease haven't you they? can when you watch now now do you see that's lily and how yeah. she had put her ears back yeah and was telling them move yeah so and they just went yeah <laughs> That's how it works. So I would like to introduce Lily to you. Hello, Lily. So Lily, she is a mule. So her mother is a Shetland pony and her father was a donkey. Yeah. And uh, it, no one knew that she was in the, in the womb of her mother. And uh, so no one knew that she that the mother is is pregnant and so when she was born it was a total a surprise oh and uh yeah the owner of the of her mother they they couldn't they didn't want her and so uh, we also got her as a as a foal she was also six uh, eight months old and well this is 12 years ago and by then she was adopted by, by one of our mares, but this mare has died already. So um, she is also quite um, friendly and uh, to the to the foals now. And uh, her personality is oh. pure. I am. Oh, I can see that without uh, and and an exclamation mark. So I am. And yeah. so she's so, so crystal clear in her behavior. And when she, when I do energy work, she's just amazing because she is so, um, yeah, totally clear. And as soon as you got it, she, she instantly changes her behavior. Oh. So that is Lily. And she is, she is tiny, so she is really not, not big, but uh, she behaves if she is a, a, a real huge, so I can stand, <laughs> you see when I stand here? Yeah. I, I am above her, so she, yeah. is, she is tiny, but in her mind, and that's the most important thing, in her mind, she is a huge horse. That's amazing. We, we could take on so much from that, couldn't we? Totally, totally. It does not depend on your size or on your outlooking. It's really just your mindset. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's just so contented, isn't she? Yeah. 
Cheers. I'm here. I'm with you. All is well. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy. Here. Yeah. All good. Yes. Yeah. Just and total contentment there. And I, she's, she especially comes and indicates uh, if someone is not taking care of his or her boundaries because she uh, shows that so clear, um, she always protects her boundaries and she realizes so easily when someone is not and, right. and indicates that. And that's very, very clear. So she then, she starts biting and she starts trying to throw uh, to lean very closely so she gets really, really intense when someone is not taking care of her or his boundaries. Jen Jenny just said these horses are, are coaching us. Yes, they are. They yeah. totally do that. And, oh, and she loves to get attention and she, yeah. now re she knows that I'm talking about her. Yes. You can feel the energy from her. Uh, totally, I do. Yeah, I can feel it. I can feel the energy connected to you and, and, and yeah. that, you know? I, I'm here, I'm in this. Yeah. And I feel her like giving out this love yeah. to, to, the, to the Zoom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Showing how that works with this biting and indicating everything. Yeah, you're the star, Lily. Cool. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing energy. It's so still. It's still and it's um, still but very strong. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Okay. We have action again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Look who is coming. Ah. <laughs> now okay. make it all about me. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's Roxy. Yes. Roxy. Is that Tinker? She is from Ireland uh, and uh, she's uh, 20 and I got her eight years ago and she is also a very calm horse. Um, she, she, she herself, she was definitely traumatized when she was a foal for the first time. Right. Um, and then she had a foal herself. She had two foals. And with the second one, she, I was told the story that in the stable where she was and where she was with her foal, that she was kind of forgotten. Oh. And she was almost starving. Oh. She and her foal. And... So um, I don't know much about this story, but, but somehow the, the owners of those stables, uh, of, those, of, the, of this stable where she was, they, they separated and get, got divorced and no one took care of the horses any longer. Oh. And yeah, and so the, so the former owner of her, uh, she then found her and brought her into her house and her stable and took care of her and the foal, but it just must have been very traumatic. Oh, yeah. And now when I work with people, she always uh, shows up when it's about a female, of, about the female line, like mother-daughter stuff. Right. And female ancestors. And she also shows if if it's about self love, right. that's um, that's one of her um, 
yeah, her, her main points she shows when, when I work with people. And so, so I'm interested, you know, you've explained the, the, the leader of the herd and, and how they, they, they exchange from one to the other. Yeah. When you're doing healing, when you have people there and the horses join to, to, to participate in the healing, is, is there anything in the way of um, like who is the leader or is that something completely different when it comes to healing? That's really fascinating for me because um, then all I told you now, this has to do with the normal order they have within the herd. But as soon as I have people here, either for coaching or for healing, um, it, it feels as if um, this order is not existing because then uh, they behave totally different. They, um, that, and then that's also why I can easily tell that this is a reaction on for this person and not an, an, a normal reaction the horses will do. So let, let's give me an example. I had a healing once and yeah, I, I forgot about the donkeys. They are, I can't show you them now with the camera because they are about 300 meters away. Okay. Um, but uh, I had, I had a client once and I was out there on the field with a, with a massage table. And uh, I had Lily standing next to me, the mule I just introduced to her, to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And um, Lily is um, much higher in the position in the herd than the donkeys are. <clears throat> donkeys have a, a different herd structure uh, normally the donkeys, they do not have a leader as where they come from originally, they, they come from, let's say, uh, Northern Africa, South Europe or uh, Asia and uh, from a, a space from a country where there is hardly anything to eat and perhaps also uh, mountainous areas. So um, they, they do not have such a close herd structure as horses have. They have a, a bigger distance amongst them. Right. And whenever one donkey sees something either dangerous or something to eat, it indicates to the others. And there is not such a, a hierarchical structure as within the horse herd. Right. And when horses and donkeys are together, it's always that the, the donkeys go last. So they do not interfere in this, um, in this ranking. So when, the, when normally when a horse comes, the donkeys are going. Right. And within this coaching, I had uh, Lily at the table, uh, very intense and <coughs> telling, okay, that's my job. And suddenly, uh, one of the donkeys came running towards the table and started a fight with Lily. And that's totally, totally unusual. And then I asked the client, um, um, can this have anything to do with you? And then she told me about uh, two people in her life, um, her husband and a girlfriend she has and that they are totally jealous and uh, always one wants to get rid of the other and wants to have her for her own. Right. So this, this was so clear that this has nothing to do with normal herd structure. So uh, the thing is that when I work on people, um, the herd structure is not um, important at that moment. Right. It's really they sense what goes first then 
is and, and why they work with the people is that they feel there is an imbalance and they behave on, on one side they mirror and on the other side then they try to heal and to to get the energy clear and smoothly running that's that's what i am aware of how it works so the normal herd structure is doesn't apply when it comes to healing with people that's it yeah that's that's amazing isn't it it, it really must, is it must be fascinating to see that when you know you observe them as a as a herd when yes. they're on their own and, and when you're out there yeah. with them to when there are people there to see that behavior change. Yeah, yeah. And um, when, when people come, they come, let's say, once or twice or three or four times, but still they only get a small range of the behavior as the horses normally do. So yeah. um, they cannot tell that uh, it's more difficult for someone who just comes uh, and tell, okay, the horse is telling me this because they do not know how the horse normally behaves. Yeah, yeah. And that's why it's really important that you are there to, it, to it needs see that difference because that information is for you. Yeah, that's, um, that's why it needs uh, an, an, an interpreter. Who yeah. interprets this behavior? Yeah. 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 That's 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 such a wonderful insight you've given us there to to the to the herd, to the the behavior, to the to the way it's different with healing and and to how you interpret what they show you. Yeah. And I bet that you you get to um <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> Curious. <laughs> um, I bet you get to the person's um deep parts much yeah. quicker. Absolutely. Because you, you're dealing with information from from yeah. the herd as well. Yeah. And so I I get to the deep point very quick with with the help of my animals um, and then it's um, often we see more than a client wants to see yeah i was gonna say that i bet yeah. that's quite that, that that happens sometimes um but um most of the times those people who come and who come often more often they want to do what they want to go to the depths yeah 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 there's there's no hiding is there yeah no don't, you can't hide that's uh, um what i also wanted to share was um for um, how a herd reacts when when an animal is dying i i wanted to tell that before but yeah somehow i got lost <laughs> um because I said that uh, safety is the most important um, issue in a herd, and when uh, and that they heal each other. So one horse uh, tries to every horse tries to heal the others, so that the whole herd is is safe and. When the herd finds out that there, there is a wounded animal or an animal that's so sick that they can't support it any longer, then it's abandoned from the herd. And that's also something that um, doesn't work well with our human mind. So that's, oh, the poor horse, it's abandoned and it will die. Yes, this horse then will die but the herd will survive because if they live in wild and they carry with them a wounded or a very sick horse, the whole herd is in danger. And uh, so in, in captivity that seldom, uh, you can seldom witness that because then it will be put down the horse anyway. Um, but what I 
wanted to share with that is that um, we often put our our human emotional thing on the herd and how how can they do that and how can they abandon a horse um, it's for the safety of the whole herd and that comes first yeah and, um, they, they have to um leave the one yeah for the for the safety of, of, of the, the herd yeah and what i witnessed and this was uh four times already we had uh, so we have been the horses with us for 15 years and so far we had four death horses um and as soon as the horse is about dying they stand next to them and then they are with them during the dying process and uh, they stay there they also lay down around them and they leave after the horse is dead about 12 hours afterwards right so um that's again uh, when the horse a horse is a danger for the group it's abandoned but as soon as it's about going to die they they then uh, accompany this right so they're there for the for the for the for the passing yeah for the transformation they and as, as soon as um the the soul of the horse is gone and there is only the the dead body left then they go and we had this uh the day uh so three weeks about three weeks ago when the the falls came in it was a sunday sunday and in the night and the following night our oldest horse died he was 35 and when i came down to the grass in the morning i saw this old dead horse lying all accompanied by all the others and the foals laying down on the other side of the fence and this was so uh, so intense emotion it was like the universe opened up for me there was the new life and the old life is gone and the new life is a company it keeps company to the old one dying it was it was really really beyond words so yeah. He he must have felt that these new horses are coming, and he wanted to got to know them, and then kind of pass it over, and then he was allowed to go. Yeah, but it's uh, it is intense, though, isn't it? It it was, yeah. So there was a joy and a new life on one side, and there was grief and and sadness and and loss of a a, a loved horse um, who was thirty five. But that's also that's the circle of life. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, we put more emotion onto it than than absolutely animals, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. just like the story you told with the badger, and yeah. you know, they they made sure they were safe. They got rid of the badger, and then it was gone. Yeah. Um, people held on to it for hours and yeah and yeah yeah we could learn a lot about letting things go and not holding them absolutely for that yeah. length of time and and yeah and how how quickly they switch so when there is danger when they hear something and they start running they run and when the danger is gone instantly they go back to to the normal mode again so yeah. it's um yeah okay i i will now join roxy yeah um i i will try to uh to do a a short meditation so that we can really connect with with this hurt that would be wonderful thank you so everyone's watching i i would invite you to to close your eyes yeah
and listen listen to Roxy she is just calmly eating grass and she feels totally safe And there is this big body with 500 kilos. He's full, calm, and still totally alert. Totally in the moment. Nothing is more important than finding the best grass at the moment. And it's it's all about her. And she's choosing. She doesn't pick everything. She doesn't pick every grass. She chooses well. And only she decides which one to take. And she doesn't think Oh no, I will leave that for someone else. So, you can also allow yourself to choose for you. She doesn't question that. For her, it's natural. Nothing else exists. And at the moment, nothing else is important but finding the best grass. And while she's doing that, she's still is so alert and all her other senses are so open that she is still aware of everything around her. So she knows where all the other horses are, how close she can come to another one. She always chooses for herself what's best for her. And I would like to invite you to, to check your life and where do you decide for yourself and what's good for you still being alert to your surrounding but choose the best for you and you can't smell the grass but it's it's although it's it's winter time already it's it's intense smell when she's picking the grass and chewing it i can smell that and i can see her her breathe 
uh, breathing. It's cold, so you can see the breathing outside. <clears throat> So my message is allow yourself to be a bit like a horse, a bit like Roxy. She is perfect in self-love. She does it. She shows it to you. She is caring for herself first and does not Doubt this, that's as it is. So I would like, or I, I hope you can take this with you. For me, that's it's also always, I, I enjoy watching them when they are eating because yeah. it's so. Uh, I don't have words for it. It's, no, it's, <laughs> it's just fills the heart. Yeah, absolutely. It's because it's also this presence which is around. They they are totally present when they are doing that. Uh, they're almost they're they're always present. And, and we are so much often in our mind and, and do not realize what's happening. But she is so peacefully eating and still t totally alert at the same time and, and knowing what's going on all around her. Carol, that... Carol has just said uh, a fabulous session. Thanks, Roxy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That was that was really, really special. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. And I'm I'm sure you must be so cold now. Are you cold? No, it's it's quite good. But I I, I have to feed them now, so I I have to get the tractor and and bring out hay. Yes. And, uh, but I have chosen well. I'm I'm. Very thickly dressed. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but so. thank you so much. And thank you so much for, for the lessons that we've learned, not just from you, but from the herd as well. And from the, the beautiful energy that, that's passed between us all. And I know everybody's enjoyed being here. And, and the exchange, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for this invitation. And I was thinking we can perhaps do it once again when they are really all up in the stable, because when, when all the animals are very close, it's, um, the, the, you can feel the, uh, the energy of the horses even more. On yes. the ground, it's, it's, it's a wider space. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We can... Yeah, that would be lovely. We can we can feel the difference in the energy then as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, I don't know, two, three months, then the, the foals will be totally integrated and then they're all allowed in the stable and we can do this. We can do this again. That would be lovely. So we are going to stop the live stream now and thank you everybody for being here and, and thank you Renata for, for joining this day and, and the herd and and it's it's been so wonderful and and um, you know anybody that wants to to find out more I know you might be doing a retreat next year. Yeah yeah so you know I am that yeah we I we'd be certain to, to let you know here uh, when that's happening and yeah. uh, yes we're going to say goodbye for now. So thank yeah. you all. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.